Okay, so we're going to give this a go. I've been battling with them all day. And as soon as I try to speak, they make lots and lots of noise. And then as soon as I cancel things like class, they stop making noise altogether. So I'm not making any promises for how today's going to go until we give it a, give it a whirl and see. Um, you guys got two handouts today. The first is assignment 202, uh, which is your second assignment. For assignment 202, you're going to be making something like this. Okay? And the purpose of this assignment, and I'll pass this around so you guys can see it here. Actually, I can pass that one around while I, I, have, I have a second that I can hold up, right? Um, the purpose of this assignment is to start to understand how you can be working in something like Rhino and then ultimately make something that's, that's physical out of it. And there's two different strategies in terms of physically making objects coming out of Rhino. One would be to just 3D print the object. Uh, and the other would be to slice it up and then glue it together like a laser cut. Um, this particular thing, having to do with topography, will benefit you huge if you learn how to do it now. Uh, like you go on to Berkeley, they never give you flat sites. Always hills. So you have to get really good at making these quickly. Um, this is very minimal in the amount of cardboard or material that you need to use. You could actually do it out of wood or something more expensive than that. Uh, for the purposes of this class, we're just using the basic cardboard that's available in the bookstore, nothing fancy. Um, but this is the kind of thing that can really save your life down the road. I've talked to students who've graduated uh, and moved on. This is one of the top items that they say, thank you for teaching me how to do this. Um, so it is valuable. That's why I'm going to teach you. Uh, about it, but it also is a really good way of kind of conceptualizing, I have this, this digital thing that I'm working with in full scale, and how do I get it to create something like this? How do I make these parts? So we're going to be working on this over several days, several class days. Um, I will do a lot of repetition. I told you last class when we started in SketchUp that I would repeat the whole process of starting in SketchUp. Um, part of the repetition is so that you can really understand how it works. There's some hidden skills that I want you to learn as part of these, and that will make more sense as, as we continue along. Um, so we will uh, we'll explore those in more depth. I will show you an actual, uh, like, how we go from start to finish in terms of creating and then ultimately gluing that whole thing together uh, so that you guys can see me glue it together and understand kind of how it works and some of the tricks in that part of it. So I went way back to the beginning, just like we started with in, um, in class last class. And that is that I went into SketchUp, and I got a piece of terrain. Now, my piece of terrain here is not particularly exciting. Okay? And part of the reason that I picked a non-exciting piece of terrain is I have to demo this in front of you. And if I have something really exciting with a lot of steps, it's going to take me too long for you guys to watch. So I want something kind of basic for me to be demonstrating with. For you guys, picking something with a little bit more um, terrain or steepness or valleys can be more interesting. The pieces or the examples that I'm, I'm sending around have a little bit more to them. Um, if you do something that's too dramatically steep, the pieces get really, really small. Um, so you don't want it too steep, but something nice. Probably something slightly more than this would be, would be good, uh, though this is, this is certainly acceptable. Okay, So I've gone ahead and I've done exactly what we did before. I went to FIO. File, geolocation, um, add geolocation, pick the spot, and then I came into geolocation and said show terrain to confirm that I like this piece of terrain. This probably took me six or seven tries of new files and trying to get the terrain to figure out the right piece, right? Because it's harder to see it when you're looking at it from the top view, what it's really going to look like. So I'm reasonably happy with this as my demonstration piece. I'm going to go to file. Uh, save as, and I'm going to go back a few SketchUp models to SketchUp 2013, and I'm going to save it on this computer. Excuse me. Here we go. And we're going to go into today. Is what's today? 212. This is the fall of 2016. And here we go. This is Hawaii example terrain. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and save that as the SketchUp 2013. Then I'm going to switch over into the world of Rhino. 
And I'm going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to bring in that example terrain. The default options here are just fine. And I'll bring in that piece of terrain. So there it is, as it was before. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and delete that extra little plane. We'll look at this in shaded view so that we can see it a little bit more. And then we have to do some cleaning up of layers. So remember, the, the mesh itself is on layer 0. So let's rename this to, say, Google Terrain. And then I'm going to delete all of these other layers. Oops. Sorry. There we go. I'm going to rename the default layer here to be Contour X. This should all seem very familiar, right? Okay. And like I said, the, the repetition is a good thing. So I have my terrain here. I want to contour it going in the X direction. So I'll start at this corner. It doesn't really matter whether it's X or Y. It's just nice to, to think of it in both directions. So I'll use the contour command, which is again under Curve, Curve from Objects, Contour. I'm going to select my, my uh, surface here, or my mesh. I'll go ahead and hit Enter. My base point is going to be right down there. I have Knot and Vertex turned on, which means I can get to that vertex. And I'm going to go off in the X direction, or I guess in this case it's the Y direction, um, off so that I'm not snapping to anything. I'll click. And then my distance between the contours, I'm going to try 100 feet and see what it looks like. Yeah, let's do 75. One more time. There's my surface. There's my corner. Go off that way. Try 75 feet. There you go. Remember my divisions, I want them to be approximately the size of the, the mesh. Having them too dense is, is going to give me less information. I probably could go a little bit more. Try it one more time. Contour. We'll do it at 60 feet. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. Then I'm going to contour in another layer. So we'll call a new layer contour Y. I can't type. Y. Make that layer active. And remember, I have to contour the surface, not the lines. If you get all the points, you contour the lines, not the, not the surface, or the mesh in this case. So let me contour again. Same base point, but this time we're going off in the X direction here. Same distance between the contours, and there you go. So now I can turn off the terrain, and I can look at my contours in the top view. If I did it correctly, they should be perfectly straight. right? If they're leaning or they're diagonal, something went wrong. So we need to do a little cleanup. So I'll take this curve, and I'm going to trim. To right there. We'll get rid of that piece. I'll trim all of these off. It's this one. To trim. There we go. Get rid of those. And then we'll use this one to trim. There we go. I'm going to delete that. So now I have a completely contained right, curve network. There's no ragged edges here. So I can go ahead and I can take all of these curves and I can make the curve network out of them. Remember, this is a good opportunity to save just in case it crashes. So I'll go to File, Save. And let me put it into today's folder. And we'll call this Hawaii Terrain. And I'll go ahead and say save. There we go. So now I'll go up to my surface curve from object, or excuse me, curve network. Yes, go ahead. All of that's good. We'll go ahead and say OK. And we'll let it process for a little bit. Remember, this can take a little bit of time. It might look like it freezes.
Now the one mistake I made is I should have created a new layer for this surface before I did the curved network. I'll just have to move it afterward. All right, so there it is. Remember, it's going to make everything run really slow until I rebuild it. So let me go ahead and select the surface, if I can. There it is. Let's go ahead and rebuild. And I'm going to start at 100 by 100. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And again, patience is a good thing. All right. And so now I have the surface. Like I said, my surface needs to be on its own layer. So let me go ahead and create a, uh, let's just call this topo surface. And I'm going to change the object to be on that layer, make it current, and turn off the contour x and contour y. So there you go. I have a nice NURB surface. Right? It's smoothed out nicely. Okay? Remember, I could elect at this point to rebuild it a little bit further, maybe a rebuild 75 by 75, whatever feels right. Okay? I'm just going to go with it the way it is. Okay? So now we have a nice surface, but we have to figure out, can I have one of those back? One of the cardboard things? We have to figure out how to translate this surface into this. Okay? Well, number one, we have to kind of start to understand what's going on in scale and how do we adapt that to our full size drawing. So, lucky for all of you, on your handout today at the bottom half, there's this topo cheat sheet, okay? Which I promise you is actually very valuable. Okay, if I open up, sorry, where'd I put it? Okay, there, so we can see it, okay? So this is something for your future use. It is printed in the book, so you can go back and look at it. It is online under this if you need to find it later. Okay? But this is going to help you out when you create your model. Okay? So number one, we need to understand what drawing scale we're going to be um, creating this model in. Okay? So the, the largest scale that I have represented here is 1 to 500. Okay? Some of the more common architectural scales are further down here. Right? Depending on your class, you may be given, I want a model that's in uh, 16th scale, or 64th scale, or 1 to 200, or whatever. Your professor may tell you that, okay? in which case you start with what scale you have. Okay? In the case of this class, because we're just picking an arbitrary piece of terrain, you can essentially pick whatever size or whatever scale feels appropriate. Okay? So the end product is meant to be 11 inches by 17 inches. Yep. It's meant to be 11 inches by 17 inches. Okay. So you'll see over here that I have something called paper size 11 by 17. Okay. In the 11 inches column, I have done the math for you. And this, these numbers are in feet, right, in full scale. So if for example, we wanted to do a model that was in 1 to 200 scale, and we wanted it to be 11 by 17. We'd come over here, right? And under 11 and under 1 to 200, we'd see that it's 2,200 feet in full scale. Okay? You can do the math in your head. Does that make sense? Okay? Likewise, 17 inches would be 3,400 feet. So, given that information, I'm going to come back here. They have to do it right over my head. And I'm going to look at this in the top view. So here it is in the top view. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a rectangle that is at 3,400 feet, comma, 2,200 feet. Enter. Okay. So that rectangle then represents this 11 by 17 rectangle at 1 to 200 scale. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. So what I want to see is, does this in fact fit, drag it down here, on the terrain, the piece of terrain that I have? 
And in this case, it turned out rather lucky, and it fits nicely, right, on my piece of terrain. It's possible that I picked I could have picked the wrong scale, right? Obviously, I had a guess for what I thought it would be. I've done this more times than you have. But it's possible that I picked the wrong scale, in which case maybe if we come back, oops, if we came back right here, uh, let's say I did uh, 1 to 500, and I did a rectangle that was 5,500 feet by 8,500 feet. Obviously, it would be way too big for the piece of terrain that I had. Okay? Some of you may have a piece of terrain that's big enough to support 1 to 500. Right? If it doesn't support it, just move down and scale. Again, there's no requirement for what you need to do. Likewise, if I came down here at a quarter inch equals a foot, right? my paper size would be 44 by 68 feet. Right? Well, that's really tiny, so I wouldn't get a whole lot out of it. So we're looking for some happy medium. It's probably going to be around the 1 to 200 range. A couple up from that, a couple down from that, in all likelihood. Okay. So let me go back here to my Rhino model. Okay? So that's the size of the ultimate physical model that I'm creating. It fits nicely on my piece of terrain, but I'd like to trim off the terrain based on that rectangle now. Okay? So I'll work in the top view, and I'm going to use the project command to project that rectangle onto the surface. So I'll go to curve, curve from objects, project. It's I need to select the surface. There's a the surface. Remember, I have to do this in the top view because it's perpendicular to the projection. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And you can see in the perspective view now that it did a really nice job of projecting that rectangle onto my surface. Okay. So now that I have that rectangle, I can go ahead and use the Trim command to trim off the excess surface. And now I have the exact 11 by 17 that I'm going to be making this out of. Okay. So now that I have this, I have to start to think about how do I build out the sides. right? So if you look carefully at this, you see how it has all the little steps? Okay. All, I have to figure out how to make all of those little steps. But before I can make those steps, I need to understand what in full scale represents one of these contours. Okay. How thick should I cut these little steps? Okay. Well, that's determined by the physical material that you're going to make the model out of. Okay. So you need the physical material so you can measure how thick is that material. Okay. The good news is if you use the cardboard that's from the bookstore, right? I've already measured it for you. It's 5 30 seconds of an inch. It looks like it's an eighth, but it's not quite. Okay. It's a little bit bigger than an eighth. So it's 5 30 seconds. And if we go back to that little cheat sheet that I had, remember we're working in the 1 to 200 scale here. We did a rectangle that was 2,200 feet by 3,400 feet. This next half, see how we get to contour material thickness. Okay, So this is in full scale. What's the thickness that you want your material to be? So we're at 530 seconds right here. So we come down 530 seconds, and we match up at the 1 to 200 scale, and we get a contour interval of 31.250 feet. Okay? So the 31.250 feet will match up with the thickness of the cardboard that I'm going to make the model out of. Okay? That's how I determine what these steps are. If I don't match up to my thickness, my physical model will either be taller or shorter than it actually is in real life. Does that kind of make sense? I know it's a lot to take in. Okay? So, Knowing that the thickness of my material at 5 30 seconds of an inch at 1 to 200 scale is 31.250 feet, I'm going to come back to my Rhino model here. I'm going to create a new layer, and this is going to be contours. Make that active. And I'm going to contour this in the Z direction. So we'll start at this corner down here. And we're going to contour going straight up in the Z direction. There it is, in the Z, by 31.250 feet. Enter. Okay. So it divides up my surface into contours that match up with 
the thickness of my cardboard. Okay, so we're jumping back and forth between full scale and the model scale as we go forward building this. Okay? So now that I have these pieces, we need to start to draw the steps of one side. Okay? And I'm going to walk you through drawing the steps of one side. There are actually two different methods. I'm going to turn off the uh, surface here for a second so we have just the contours. There are two different methods to do this. One I think is a lot easier once you learn it. It's a little hard to learn. Okay? The other one is easier initially, but it's not as fast and will take you longer long term. So I'm going to show you both so that you have some experience with it. Okay? So I'm going to start, I'll do each of the long sides here, and I'll show you. Okay? So I'm going to do a new layer, and I'm going to call this side 1, for lack of a better term. We'll make it active, and I'm also going to change the color so that you guys can see it to be red. Okay? So I'm going to go up this side with my steps. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll come over here to the point the point tool, and I'm going to create a point on the end of every one of these. I do want to make sure that I'm snapping to the end, so that I'm right on the end. Right. By the way, if you click and hold on this, you can get the create multiple points, which will make your life a little bit faster as you click through. Okay, so I made it all the way up one side. There's all my points. Okay? I'm going to take these points right there and I'm going to rotate I'm going to rotate them 3D. So we'll go up to transform, rotate 3D. I'm going to start here at the bottom, bottommost point along in this case what is it? The x-axis. And I'm going to fold them so that they're flat. So see how they were going up the side, now they're going flat? Okay. With them going flat, I can then use my regular polyline tool, starting at the first point. We're snapping to perpendicular. So it's you hover over a point, come back till perpendicular, and you draw the path up the side. Like so. All right, bear with me. Almost there. OK, so I finished that whole side. When that's done, I can select them all again, except for this. And I can rotate 3D, again starting at that first point, and do the opposite. There, back up to there. And now I have the steps going all the way up that side. If I did them correctly, and I look at them in the side view, they should be like a staircase with perfectly vertical right, pieces and perfectly horizontal pieces. That's what we're after. Okay? The alternative, so to me that's the easiest one when you st are first starting out. Okay? The alternative to that is I'm going to go up this side using the other method, and that is that whenever we draw in a 3D program, and this is the same for Rhino as it is in any other 3D program like AutoCAD, for example, and that is that we have something called a drawing plane. 
We have... We have something called a drawing plane. And that plane is a flat two-dimensional plane that we can draw in. And by default, you've already experienced this. If you were drawing in Rhino, right, whatever you draw is always going to be right at that ground plane. Okay? So if I came, oh, no problem, I'm just going to draw up the side here, and I tried to draw starting here, that would be fine, but how do I, I can't, I can't do it. Okay? But what we can do is we can switch the drawing plane so that it's not flat on the ground anymore, but it's in line with the direction that we want to go. So we do that in Rhino by clicking this little triangle and going to set C plane, and we're going to do it three points. So we're making a new drawing plane. I'm going to start at the lowest most point right here. And you can kind of see when I zoom in, see how I get a little x and y axis right? that shows up? It's a little baby one. Okay? And actually, before I do it, let me turn on the grid. Hold on a second. Let me go to, um, you don't have to do this, but this will help illustrate things a little bit here. Let me go to options. Let me go to grid. Um, I'm going to do it 2,000. And I'll say OK. No, it's not big enough. Hold on. Do it every 12 inches. OK, so that grid is now every, every one foot. OK? So you can see that right now that's where the plane is. That's where I would draw. OK? Instead, I'm going to go up to my set C plane. Three points. I'll start it right here at the first point. I'm going to go off in this direction. Then I want to set the other point vertical. So we'll change views and we'll go up vertically here. And you'll see that the grid and the x and y coordinates are now not flat anymore, but they're in line with one of my sides, which was the idea. So now I can come in here without drawing any points and start at the first point here and go over, snap, and draw right up the side. Which to me saves several steps, right? And ultimately is a very, very good skill for you to have. Which method you choose to use is entirely up to you. Um, but I at least want you to try this one out and see. Conceptually, I think it's a little bit more difficult to get used to, but it will benefit you in the long run. Almost there. Okay. Now, I get to the last most step. I'll hit Enter to finish. Okay? Now, this is critical. This stays in that C plane until you revert it back to the original. Okay? And before, rather than trying to pick a new C plane along the front here, um, I'm going to go ahead and reset it back to the original and then go back to a new C plane. So after you're done with one C plane, go back to the beginning and then start it fresh. So to do that, we're going to go back to our set C plane and we're going to pick world top, which is the default. Okay? So we'll go back to world top, it goes back to our normal plane, and then we could work, say, on the back side here. Okay? So I'll start at this point this time, and I'll go to set C plane, three points, start right here. We want to start by going off in this direction, then we want to go vertically in that direction. So I reset the C plane to be in line with this end. Okay? So now it gets a little bit more tricky. On either side, it was just a straight set of steps, right? working up the side. I never went back down. When we go across here, it gets a little bit more tricky. So if I started at this point, I'd have to go down to match up with that point. I'd go down to match up with this point. I'd go down to match up with this point, and down to match up with this point. Okay. Now. 
if I look at this, see how that point and that point line up straight across? Okay. The contour that goes in between those two, that's the next step down, doesn't actually hit the edge. Right? If I was looking straight down on it, it misses the edge. There it is. Misses the edge. So in this case, because of the way I've drawn my steps, I need to go down by the distance of my contour, which was 31.250 feet. So I'm going to type in 31.250 feet there. We'll go across there and then back up. We'll go straight across here. Those two are at the same level there. But the, here I am again. We have to go down for this next contour like that. And we'll get to the corners in a bit. So this is a little bit more complicated because we go down, then we go back up, and then we have to go down again. Okay. Likewise, the front down here is going to be very tricky. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and go through that one just so you can see me do it. What I want you to do for your exercise today is I want you to get to the point where you've drawn all four sides of steps to the best of your ability. I can then come around and check on how you did in terms of does it go up and down the correct way when you have something complicated. Then next class, if you have all four sides done, we'll talk about what happens at the corners and we'll talk about how do you make it and get it ready to laser cut. Okay, so we're going to break it into two pieces uh, from here. So the goal today is to get your contours done and your steps on the sides done, but not the corners. Okay, I'm going to do this one in front. Remember, first thing is I'll set my C plane back to the world top. I mean, are they trying to make a lot of noise? Okay. So let's go back to set C plane. This time it's going to be three points again. We'll start here. We're going to go off in this direction. We'll go up in the vertical direction. There it is. And I'll start right here. And from there, I'm going to go straight across. Now, at this point, I have to go down. So 31.250 feet over here, back up, over 31.250 feet down, over, now it goes back up, so we'll go up, up, go across, down to 31.250 feet. over, back up, over, and back down. So that was a particularly challenging one because of the way the contours worked. However, once you start to get the hang of seeing what's really happening and you look at this, especially if you turn the surface back on, you can kind of get a sense for why the contours go at certain intervals, right? In terms of where they go down and where they go up. Right, likewise, up here we can see it happening there as well. Okay? So once again, I'll go back to my set C plane world top to go back to the basics. Your goal today is again four stepping sides that go all the way around, right? Regardless of the method and all of these contours. We'll pick up from there next class. Okay? Mm -hmm.